This is a journey into sound. Uh, my name is Paul Miller, aka DJ Spooky, from New York City, and I'm an artist, a writer, and a musician. And I'm here, I guess, rapping with you guys about everything from DJ production to turntable stuff to just thinking about music. And we're here at South by Southwest Festival 2010. Some of the things I'm best well known for are my productions for films like uh, Slam with Saul Williams. I produced the soundtrack with that. Um, that won the Cannes Film Festival and Sundance Film Festival. I've also done scores for films and bits and pieces here and there, stuff like Scream 2. Um, I did music for Spawn, for um, you know bits and pieces with things like Scanner Darkly. Um, I also produce and work with other artists like Yoko Ono, Thurston Moore from Sonic Youth. Um, done remixes and productions with Public Enemy, um, Don Penn, who's you know our classic track, No No No, you know stuff like that. Um, yeah, and I also write quite a bit. Uh, my book, Sound Unbound, has been one of MIT's top-selling books uh, about music and technology for the last couple of years. And my first book, Rhythm Science, won several awards about graphic design. And, um, you know, just, I'm always trying as much as possible to figure out different angles. <laughs> Um, my film Rebirth of a Nation was a remix of D.W. Griffith, mainly from the viewpoint of applying DJ technique to film. I would rescore and re-edit the film live, and I also would just make sure to try and apply the notion of the soundtrack as a kind of relentlessly updated form for you know creativity. So I had Kronos Quartet play a lot of my compositions, and at the end of the day, a lot of the material was about a kind of collage aesthetic as applied to a very politically um, incorrect film. And I wanted to, as much as possible, reach into some of the racial politics that Birth of a Nation had sparked. Um, it's a film mainly with whites and blackface who are angry that a, a black person has been sort of elected um, as president, of course, and you can see Obama and the Republicans, you can easily see what's going on. So it's a relentless kind of critique, not only of our contemporary era, but the world of sort of politics, cinema, and propaganda that we all call home. I get asked about hardware versus software. They're, they're simply tools, but some tools are better than others. And I really, I, I love the idea of editing a film live and direct. Uh, whenever possible and I use that as part of my video backdrop for my concerts and shows and I also try as much as possible to think about um, the tools as being transparent they shouldn't get in the way in fact they should be uh, enablers something that allows you to kind of jump in figure it out and then above all you know use it to create more beautiful and interesting situations in music I use in general I use the Pioneer CDJ and DVJ for most of my set um, and I also try as much as possible to get people to um, think about what I'm doing as kind of sampling as an art form in its own right. So I'm always editing and sampling things live constantly. Um, yeah, it was part of that process. I ended up working with a great production group called Music Soft Arts that works with Apple. And um, so I have my DJ Spooky app that lets you integrate material from your iTunes library and DJ from your phone. So I'll be doing a series of showcases around that for South by Southwest as well.
I'm doing several talks over the next couple days, one about copyright law, another about this notion of creative processes and looking at digital media and the DJ as someone who's kind of a really, I think, central figure for our information economy right now. And when you think about hoarding and pulling together all of these collectible moments, which are records, that's what I think gives DJing a kind of an overview of the music industry that other, you know, forums like rock or hip hop or techno, um, the DJ is someone who collects, to me at least, some of the best moments of these genres. So that's what the style is. Basically, what I'm sampling, I have all these artists there in my band. I, I think it's cheap and lazy, and I have very little respect for the music that way. You can't just have a, a record that's made up of everybody else's records and not pay them for it. DJing inherently is you're playing other people's records, right? But um, as a producer, I've worked with people like Yoko Ono, I work with the guys from the police, like Stuart Copeland, who's one of my favorite drummers. Um, I work between like live music and between, um, you know, sampling. I've never been sued. And I'll also be focusing on that with my book, Sound Unbound. Um, so I have 36 essays by people like Moby, Chuck D from Public Enemy, Saul Williams. Um, I also have Jaron Lanier, who's one of the pioneers of virtual reality. Um, we had the composer Steve Reich, yeah, Brian Eno. So it's a radically different group of people. And the, the common denominator is I try as much as possible to focus on creativity. If I had any tips for survival here, I'd say keep uh, two things on hand. Uh, one, be able to give people CDs and bits and pieces of anything that you've done immediately so that you always have a fresh you know, mix to hand out and give people so they can check your style. Second thing is always, always, always go and check out some good restaurants. Ironworks is amazing at barbecue. Don't sleep on that. And uh, Waterloo Records. For any survival, you know, you got to check out Waterloo. It's a brilliant record store. I'm heading over there in a little bit. <laughs> All right, peace.